that. Hi, welcome back to English Recaps today, I'm going to explain fantasy crime movie called The Invisible Watch Out and like this video. Mother gives an impromptu speech about Nick letting him know what a decent kid he has grown up to be even after his dad's passing then, at that point, gives him a gift that ends up being a watch he shows it to the visitors and leaves the banquet Mick cuts himself a piece of cake and goes down to the device table in the cellar where he looks at the weapon from the gag it ends up being simply a fantasy breakfast, is as of now hanging tight for him at the table Mick needs to get into a writing. Class however his mom isn't as yet keen on that since graduation isn't seven days his mom focuses on him he follows to school, where he gives the exposition he wrote to Shane for cash a young lady welcomes him to Avi's party. Tomorrow evening yet scratch needs to decrease in the washroom the harassers sting a person named Pete Annie shows up who is very despondent. That Pete has cash for hostel to smoking gum yet he has no cash to reimburse his obligation, since he is associated with a few dim. Dealings of this group in class the educator consolingly lets Jimmy know that his sonnet wasn't terrible and its scratches move, and he sits on the table and peruses a sonnet that everybody ought to have loved yet when the ringer rings everybody dissipates when Pitt is situated in the lounge area he sees. His injured arm and heads over to Annie endeavoring to take care of the obligation for Pete is fruitless she just limits the cash and sends him away he calls her a wretched failure who can do nothing and leaves except for she won't surrender that effectively and after the battle they sit in the primary's office. One thing she doesn't comprehend is the reason he believes he's superior to her socially assuming he sells his own research papers. And all he does is call himself a fraud and the chief strolls and he lets Annie go and they examine her concerns in confidential tomorrow. The chief doesn't have the foggiest idea why he engaged with her since he is a particularly dutiful person yet. Scratch just asks to return home Annie's stepmother has not prepared her sibling Victor's supper not surprisingly and they have a quarrel over it and her dad upholds Annie. Because she does sit on the couch all day and does nothing Annie quickly cooks her brother dinner and starts listening to music while picking at the wall with a knife Victor asks if she is going out tonight she says not now but a little later. But we don't know where exactly Nick is at home with his essays Pete is his middleman in addition to his friend who hands over the money. From the guys for the work done Pete asks if he will go to Evie's party but he won't be here tomorrow night. He bought a ticket to London for a literary course he hasn't notified his mother so she finds out when he leaves Annie leaves the house, and is met by Marcus they have come on a case to steal a car but Annie is interested in the jewelry counter she smashes it, and collects the contents she's out of her mind and the guy doesn't like the idea they hide in an alley. But the guy tells her that this is out of bounds after the sleepover Annie gets ready and Marcus asks her to leave her back. She shouldn't shove it at school it's not her phones but she thinks it's time for her to make some money and leaves and Marcus gets mad and calls the police at school she hides the jewelry in her locker and Pete peeks at her as she paces around the school and looks over at Nick the police are already opening the drawer and when they find the jewels there she is arrested from the station she calls Marcus and tells him that she is out on bail the trial is in a couple of weeks but before that she has a clue who set her up she will figure it all out herself this conversation overheard by Detective Brian. In the meantime Mick promises Pete that he will write him and asks him not to worry because this is not the last goodbye at home his mother is already waiting for him who has been told about the delay of the flight he booked a month ago. But she does not even want to listen to him because it is as if she has lived her whole life with a stranger Nick is already getting ready for his flight picking up the watch his mother gave him. Furthermore, Pete gets punched external the school Annie torments him. At the station she believes he's the person who ratted her out in light of the fact that Pete was watching her. At the storage spaces so Scratch's flight is as yet two hours away he chooses to come to the party. After, go to After all where he lets the young lady know that he's leaving for London on the following flight and she proposes that there's zero extra time she inquires as to why he really wants this old watch when he has this cool. Watch it turns out the watch he is wearing is the last gift from his late dad yet at a private second he stops, and tosses the young lady a ticket wishing her a cheerful occasion as he heads home himself he entertains himself out and about, 
and a vehicle appears that is obviously not with well-meaning goals when Scratch attempts to run he gets run over, and falls face first into the soil it ends up being the domineering jerks who are beating Nick and Annie is sitting in the vehicle Pete implores. Her to stop the folks yet she simply comes in and adds Nick Annie. Needs to get a conciliatory sentiment however Scratch calls her a failure then she smacks him upside the head. And he falls into the spring hitting his head on a stone the harassers understand he's not breathing. And are terrified out of prison yet Annie powers his body to be maneuvered profound into the forest where he gets a watch from his mom. They find a sewer vent in the forest where they dump his winded body and we see him. Actually moving his eyelids she comes to see Marcus. When she lets him know what she has done he tosses her out the entryway toward the beginning of the day she consumes her sweater. With an end goal to keep warm and a fit as a fiddle Nick leaves the forest he comes to school and asks the young lady for what reason she didn't go to London yet she disregards him when the educator poses an inquiry. Nick effectively responds to it yet the educator actually doesn't hear the response and rehashes Nick. Words when she requests criticism about the speaker's last section which is Nick the young men affront him and, surprisingly, the young lady he gave a pass to London yesterday, says that Nick generally attempts to carry on like he's over the others yet he believes it's a trick. And no one hears him on purpose then he throws the book at the shelves but when he turns around the book is there again. In the principal's office he tries to call his mother. But when the principal walks in the phone disappears from his hands he gets a call from his mother who can't find Nick the principal promises. To send someone to check if he's in school and asks him not to hang up Mick tries to yell for his mom but all he hears on the phone is that he has a bad feeling in the hallways he bumps into a girl but no it seems only to him the girl is fine as he runs home he gets hit by a car but Nick is surprisingly unharmed at home an agent walks past him and reports 18 year old Nick Powell missing over the radio. When the cops leave she tells him that she feels something happened to him because she knows him but the police say she didn't know about London. And leave and when his mother closes the doors Nick says he is dead but no one hears him again he wanders. Around the city where not a soul notices him Detective Brian wastes no time and strolls down the road near Avi's house where a party was held last night and notices a path leading out of the woods where he finds tire tracks. And a side mirror his assistant has had a chat with the principal Mick had an argument with a girl named Annie Newton yesterday. At Annie's house her father answers to the cops that she's on the roof when they question her Nick overhears them the police sent a search party to the woods but her alibi is that she was with Marcus that night. And when Nick finds out she killed him for allegedly snitching on her he throws her off the roof. But only he sees it in the room she calls Pete and asks him to come because a search party has been sent into the woods Nick comes home and tries to shoot himself but alas all in vain the search party is briefed and even Pete is there the group goes out to search and when Pete gets a little behind detective Bryn's assistant is watching him in Nick's room a bird crashes into his window and lies on its last breath it appears on his shoulder and is transported into his world but when it dies it is also gone from his hands which means he is still alive just stuck in this world he runs into the woods where he finds the hatch where he was thrown. And he hears a search party he calls for his dog who points to the officer's watch but she also senses Nick. And he tries to lead her to the hatch. But she runs off in the other direction and the whole group follows her and Pete goes behind and looks. At the place where they hid the corpse in the evening their group talks about how they will soon find his body but Pete can't take it anymore. He is going to tell the police everything although according to Annie he is as much involved. As they are because he didn't do anything that night the police come to Annie's house again and Nick whispers that she can't get away Annie is. Packing up the house and when Victor wakes up she says goodbye to her brother and her father walks in. And throws her out she warns that if anything happens to her brother he will come and kill him at night the search party. Continues to work the doctor tells them they have two to three days to find him if he is not severely injured a helicopter flies. Over Nick and he tries to open his eyes and wiggle his fingers Brian comes to Marcus and leaves his card for him to call if Annie comes. And asks him to tell him if the 2003 Mercedes that was stolen on Monday arrives at home Nick. Lashes out at his mother for her perfect world which she tries to control completely. But when he breaks the glass everything goes back to normal as if nothing had happened but after a few moments his mother can no longer control herself and falls to her knees in hysterics Pete is caught in the street by Marcus who tells him that the police are after Pete and takes him with them Marcus at 
Gunpoint asks Pete to show them where they hid the body because if they find it they will drag Marcus down with them and he needn't bother with the difficulty any longer one of the domineering jerks calls Annie and tells her that Matthew will go to the police yet Marcus is really there sitting tight for her Annie calls Pete requesting that he meet her. At the scaffold the folks are looking for trouble and scratch attempts to stand out of an analyst who is doing crossword confounds then. He nick the pigeons and she at last notification that Pete is going to leave Pete approaches the young men and Annie who has been. Watching from underneath is being pushed by Marcus he asks Pete to run home and they ought to get off since Pete has been followed. When the police show up she grabs the weapon from Marcus but since there's no place to run gets out beyond preposterous. And when she descends Brian requests that she let them know where Scratch is nevertheless she quietly takes off Mick bounces on the net and hollers that she will get found out yet she shouts that she never will so she can hear him after all Annie. Goes to the club to get cash for the taken ring and afterward goes out on the dance floor. To get her brain off all that she ends up having long hair which Nick is either stunned or pleased by in light of the fact that she generally went with a cap in the first part of the day she goes to her mom's grave to atone Nick attempts to break through to her for he realizes she can hear him yet she just leaves Annie separates the entryways of the school and leaves an envelope of cash for Victor in her storage Nick requests that she let the police know where her body is. And when he shouts she pivots yet believes she's going off the deep end she needs to unwind and clean up and Nick is as of now trimmed off as his body attempts to awaken after a shower he rests with her on the game's mat and attempts to interface. With her she cries a tear and Nick possibly gets up the following morning when she is gone and the school day has begun right now she comes to his home and separates the entryways she goes to his room and they see his child pictures together and she entertains herself while Nick is taken out again his mom appears and Annie gets away from she hustles into the forest to the portal with his body yet Nick isn't there Mick requests that she focus on an item lying close by she sees it and it ends up being a parcel of Pete's enemy of smoking sweets she requests that Nick hold tight and takes off at school Annie snags Pete and he tells her that she was truly betrayed by Marcus emerges from the station and plunks down with the folks yet Annie winds up there requesting that they get out the folks leave him a firearm prior to doing so she requests that he leave and Pitt needs to go too far with pills meanwhile and Annie has previously pushed Marcus to the brink of collapse to shoot him since he handed her over and Nick is as yet alive Pete appears on the scene to see Scratch and lets him know that they had his bodies on the rocks by the thoroughfare Pete's folks run into the room and he awakens Marcus tells Annie that the body is at the dam and she leaves however not with such ease he shoots her in the thigh and she shoots him in the shoulder and afterward. Limps away Annie calls Brian and asks him to give the money from the locker to Victor and they should hurry to the damn Nick. Is there at this time he goes downstairs and sees his body among the rocks and Brian's assistant informs him that the dam will open in 15 minutes and everything will be flooded there Mick tries to get his body out but the dam has already opened the police arrive and ask to stop the current and Nick is lucky the water hasn't had time to reach his face Brian notices his body and the doctors find a faint pulse Annie whispers his name from the causeway and Nick's spirit hears it Mick's mother is told he is alive and in the ambulance he loses his pulse and passes out Annie is bleeding out in the car at this time and as she falls asleep an officer approaches her who notices the wound and asks her to leave the car but she drives off Nick is resuscitated and follows his body his mother is asked to wait in the hallway while they do what they can and Annie tries to get away from the chase she gets pinned down in an alley on both sides but Nick whispers that he needs her and most likely she hears this and breaks through the fence a little later the police find only her abandoned car and she is already sneaking into the hospital through the back door Mick's spirit calls her after her and stops her in front of the entrance to the floor so she doesn't get caught by the cops in the hallways Annie meets his mother who immediately slaps her in the face but Nick asks her to convince her to listen to Annie she tells her mother that she doesn't know how but she feels he's around and she hears what he says or once she begins to repeat his words telling her that she has been in his bedroom since he went missing and was reading his poem for the first time and her mother realizes that it really is Nick Annie asks to go in to see Nick for a minute she can help and bring him back but she is already 
Bleeding in the room, she lies down next to him and uses the pen and her mother gave her to ask him to come back. Then Nick's spirit realizes it's his time and Nick's body awakens and thanks her for saving him. And then they both pass out. Victor is flying the plane. And when it returns to land, Nick comes in and asks what the boy is doing here alone. But he replies that his parents don't know he's here. His sister was supposed to bring him, but she died. Then Nick offers to send her a letter and writes on the plane to Annie to say hello and send her on a distant flight.